right, guys. So a lot of people are going to ask me, why would you go and downgrade from the eight to the six? Here's why. For me, now keep in mind that everything uh, is going to be situational. So depending on what you fly, how you fly, um, you know, things like that, how many models you have, things like that are going to decide which controller you're going to get. Now, right off the top, guys, I don't fly anything seven channel. I have um, a T28 Trojan behind me. I'll give you guys a quick look at that. I have a couple of them actually, but the Dynam, the yellow one, actually has a gyro in it. Now, to use that gyro, I would need a seventh channel. Um, but I don't use the gyro on it, at least not yet. That being said, the fact that I don't use seven channels doesn't really make a difference either, and I'm gonna tell you why. If I do end up using a seven channel plane for whatever reason, I still have my DX Gen 8 one. This thing works like a champ. I've never had any issues with it. So for my day-to-day -day flyer, all I really need is a six channel because I'm just flying six channel and below planes. So if I'm gonna upgrade and get the, 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 the speak alerts, excuse me, the speaking alerts and, and the uh, diversity antennas and things like that, I don't necessarily need to pay the extra $70 to get the DX8 or nine or whatever because I'm mostly gonna be flying six channels and below. And if I ever do need to program a seventh or eighth channel, I've got this baby right here. So that's one of the main reasons that I went with the six. I wanted an upgrade version of a DX Spectrum, but I didn't need to spend that extra money because I already have the eight. Now, let's talk about the differences because there are not many. The differences that are on this model from the DX8 Gen 2 are important to some people and not so important to most people, if that makes sense. Obviously you get the two extra channels, that's gonna be right off the bat. Um, you Both controllers have the two diversity fixed antennas. Um, you can use the battery pack in this, obviously it doesn't come with it, but I bought it separate, still saved money. Now, one of the main differences is, now both of these, the DX Gen 8 II and the DX6 Gen 3, or the DX8 Gen 2 and the DX6 Gen 3 have seven toggles, okay? But it's how those toggles are divided up that make them very different. So for the DX6, we have four two-position toggles, okay? So four of these seven toggles are simply two-position toggles, okay? That being said, it also has three three position toggles okay and that's going to be here and here and here so that's one of the main differences you have two i'm sorry four two positions and you have three three positions for a total of seven now on the dx8 gen 2 you have two two positions and five three positions so you actually get those extra little toggles in there um that being said for me and what i fly again it doesn't make that big of a difference but for you or for someone else or for someone that doesn't already have uh, an above six channel controller perhaps that does make a big difference but that is one of the main differences you have on the dx gen 8 you have a few more of the three switch toggles now rotary knob you'll notice um on my dx 8 gen 1 i have a rotary knob here now on the Gen 8 II, there's a rotary knob here, as well as um, the DX9. There is no rotary knob on our DX6. That being said, I've been using this thing for several years and I have never used that rotary knob. So again, for me, my situation, I didn't need the rotary knob. Um, both of the DX Gen, the DX8 Gen 2 and the DX6 Gen 3 have a 192 by 96 pixel display backlit, which I showed you there. Uh, we'll take another quick look at that. Um, you can see that that's going to be on all the new DXs unless you get up to the IX12 and above, and then you got that color screen going on there. Um, but as you can see, it doesn't look much different. 
Sorry guys. It doesn't look much different than the Gen 1. So it's not, it, you're not really getting any different type of screen on any of these models until you hit up near the iX12. So, throttle high. Let me turn that, that up, it didn't give me a, an alert. So there you go. Um, so both of them have the 192 by 96 pixel display. Um, they're both backlit. Now, there's a few little key features that this DX6 does not have that the DX Gen 2 does have, and I'm gonna run those by you real quick. Servo balancing, adjustable servo speed, and absolute movement. Those are three features that are available on the DX8 Gen 2 that are not available here. Again, I will never use those, and if I get to a point where I need to use those, I'll cross that bridge when I get to it, but for the stuff that I fly, I just don't see it happening. So servo balancers, adjustable servo speed, and absolute travel adjustment are on the DX8 Gen 2, not the DX6 Gen 3. You have five um, programmable mixes on the DX6. Five programmable mixes. On the DX8, you're gonna have 10. So there's double that. Um, I don't know that there's um, a call for me to ever have 10 programmable mixes uh, that being said, maybe there is for you or someone else watching. So you do get double the programmable mixes and you get um, eight curvable mixes and only five on the DX6. That's it, guys. Those are the only differences. A few little features, a couple little toggles, and two channels. So for me, I went with the DX6 and now you know why. And that pretty much sums up why I got the DX6. It has all the bells and whistles with the text alerts, I mean, sorry, the voice alerts, um, all the new stuff with the diversity antennas that run here through the handle. Um, it's got the new gimbals. It, it, to me, it's just not worth the extra money that I could spend somewhere else. So there's your DX6, guys. I pulled it out. Now let me show you guys how to install this battery pack that does not come stock in the DX6. All right, guys, now I'm gonna show you how to install this lithium ion rechargeable pack that will take place, um, take the place of your AA batteries uh, so you're not shelling out money constantly for AA batteries. Again, I did buy this separately. It was $34.99 um, at my local hobby shop. It does not come with the DX6. I'm gonna show you some mistakes that people make when putting this in. It seems like this should be an easy install, and it, and it is if you understand. So we're gonna take the battery cover off. Now, normally you'd see back up in here um, let me move this out of the way a little. It would be plugged in. It's not because I already messed with this a little bit, uh, a little bit ago, and it's already unplugged. See this piece of foam right here? This is your first step. Let's uh, get this piece of foam out. Just pull that right out of there. It's not epoxied. It's not glued. It's just sitting in there. Same thing with the tray. Now, normally this would be plugged in right there, guys. You can see. Um, but I unplugged it. So you'll just unplug it. When you unplug this, guys, make sure you're not yanking on this thing. Don't just pull on it. You'll rip the wires. You could even rip your connection on the inside. In which case, you'll have an even bigger problem. So just grab both wires, not just one. Grab both wires firmly and just give it a nice, consistent tug. It'll come off. Take this tray out, set it to the side. Now, here's where the mistakes are made. People take this battery. They know it goes here like this. This needs to be at the bottom where you're going to plug it in at. Um, to match up with the hole on the back of your battery cover. Now let me show you something. Put this thing in there. Guess what? This doesn't fit. You can't put this back on. I'm going to show you why. Get this out of here. Inside here is more foam. It's just a, a thin layer of foam at the bottom. We're going to use this screwdriver. Peel it up. Pop it out. Now it's just thick enough that it keeps you from being able to install your charger pack. So we'll use this, keep this raised up here. What I'm gonna do guys is I'm gonna get this bent just a little bit up, bend this just a little bit so I can get to it. And I'm gonna stick this in and it's gonna go right into the same plug or so it should. gentle with it. All right, it's in there. Now, you're going to see inside here, guys, there's a little room around where the plug is. There's kind of a slot in there. You're going to want to put 
this excess wire in there so that this battery pack will fit nicely. So what I do is I just kind of put it in there, get it, get it started, and it'll all just kind of go in there. Going back into that reservoir. And then I slide my battery pack in, and now it's in there nice. Um, wiring is pushed inside that hole there so that it's not just being bundled up in here and destroyed. I'm gonna take my battery cover and it should <laughs> should slide right right back on for me just like that okay now as i showed you guys earlier you can pop up this little rubber piece right here and that is where you'll charge so one thing there's two versions of this to buy guys uh, one comes with the AC adapter, one does not. I already have the AC adapter left over from my DX8 and my DX7S, so I did not need to buy that power adapter. I can just use the one that is uh, already here um, at the flight deck, and it'll work just fine. So if you have an older one, um, you can go ahead and use that. So that's it, guys. This is the new DX6 Gen 3 taking place of the Gen 2. Uh, has all the bells and whistles that I need. I did not need an 8 as I explained earlier. So hopefully you guys, um, if you don't need an 8, pick one of these up. They're amazing. Horizonhobby.com. Head over to your local hobby store. Uh, go to Amazon, whatever you need to do. Um, and if you want to save a little bit extra money in the long run, grab yourself the battery pack. It is the SPMA 9602 Spectrum uh, Lithium Ion Battery Pack. So there it is, guys. DX6 is mine. Gen 3. And we'll be using this tomorrow when we go out to the field, uh, providing that the wind um, cooperates. Thanks for stopping by the channel, guys. Make sure you hit that subscribe, hit that like button. Um, if there's anything you want to see, let me know. If you need any advice, go ahead and hit me up in the comments. This has been Jim, the voice of champions here at the VOC Flight Deck. Thanks for stopping by.